Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be taking a decent saw and turning it into a really nice saw. Simple improvements can make a big difference. Let's dive in. I reshaped the handle. Now, why would I do that? Well, number one, the most common saw I use in the shop is this crosscut saw. It's from Veritas. It's a really nice saw. It works phenomenally. Uh, it's just incredibly light. And some people really like light saws, but sometimes you want a bit of a more mass on it. You want a brass back because brass is a heavier thing. And so I have this tenon saw from PAX, and both of these are around the same price point. Uh, this one feels better. It has a better shaped handle, but the PAX saws normally come with this handle, which is incredibly uncomfortable to use. So I generally like the saw of the PAX, but I much prefer the handle of the Veritas. So what's a guy going to do? Well... The nice thing with the uh, PAX saws is that the handles are, well, they're, they're really bulky. And the nice thing is you can reshape that. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Today we're going to be reshaping this handle and forming it into something that feels good in the hand. So now we have a saw that is weighted well with a folded back, but it now is also comfortable. So this is what's going to make the big difference in a saw. Let's dive into doing that. So this is a PAX saw, and for the price, it's about the best you can possibly buy. It is just a phenomenally good deal for what it is. You even come with the, the split nuts, the folded back. It's got a lot of things that only come in high-end saws with a, uh, a lower-end price, and it makes it kind of nice. So we need to work on these split nuts, and you can get a split nut driver, um, but it's easier just to make your own, and you can actually modify a screwdriver, put a file, and shape it down, and uh, then you get one that actually will fit it. Now with these, you need to be careful to put all your pressure on top of it and hold in place. Don't let it bounce up, um, especially if you can square off the sides of the screwdriver. This one's a little bit loose. I would have uh, liked to make it a little bit fatter. Most of my other split nuts actually have a slightly smaller um, slot. So we can pull out the hardware and this will allow us to then start adjusting the saw handle. Now when it comes to shaping a saw handle, there really is no right way to do it and you can follow other patterns and, and try and make things that, that look like something else um, but it's one of those things that it's a very personal touch you want it to feel good to you and so you want to shape it to fit your hand and the more it feels good to you the more you're going to want to use it the more it's just going to work better because you have a better connection with it so i'm going to go at it with a series of rasps and files and different shapes to fit around and work it to the rough shape I want it to be in. You will notice that I have it in a hand screw clamp and then I put that hand screw clamp into the vise. Uh, and this will actually bring it up a little bit closer so it makes it easier to see. Plus it allows me to maneuver it around a lot easier. With just having the, the, the clamp end there I can get all the way around this rather than being on one side or the other. Most of this work is going to be done with a series of rasps. The rasps take off a lot of material very quickly and they will then shape it down to close to what I want. And then I can come in with files and really do the detail work and get rid of all the marks from the rasps. Especially the, the files have smaller shapes to get into the, the smaller holes and uh, actually shape it a little bit more intricately in some of the smaller spaces. A lot of this will be done with a foreign hand. Uh, it allows me to rasp off one side and then flip around to the file. But the foreign hand just doesn't have all of the, the shape that I want to get into. So I'm going to be using a whole pile of different ones. And if you want to see more, I have a, an entire video series on uh, rasp and files. And I did a live not too long ago where I went into detail on what's the difference between them, which ones do you need, what's the shapes, and how do they work. Um, and so if you want to see more of that, I'll try and leave a link to those videos down below. But having a, a whole pile of rasps and files is very useful. You don't need all of them, though. Uh, just one good foreign hand will do most of the work and then a couple finer files to get into some of the, the holes and shapes. Now I'm going to occasionally pull it out and put it in my hand and I want to actually feel it because I want it to fit my hand. And uh, that is most of the work. Everything that's done on the outside then is just for appearance sake. And it doesn't really have any amazing quality of usefulness, but it is one of those things that when you pick it up, you want it to look good. And so we're going to be doing a, a few different things here with lamb tongues and different shapes. And I'm playing with some different designs and ideas. I have a couple other saw handles out that I like, and I'm 
pulling a little bit from this one, a little bit from this one, and there's no right or wrong on this. Just shape it to something that you like. Shape it to something that feels good to you. Have a little bit of experiment. Have a little bit of fun. And uh, there is no right or wrong here. So it's a chance that you can try something new and uh, have a little bit of fun with it. I thought about doing a lamb's tongue on the front of this, but I decided to instead do the, 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 the hanging hook. Um, you see this on quite a few old saws. They have this little... Um, hook up at the front that will allow it to hang on a rod. Um, not too many people actually hang their saws on a rod, but it is a possibility. And it does look good, and it shows that there there's a little bit of skill in this because it is a little bit more delicate shape on there. And uh, it's just one of those things to play with and experiment with, and you never know. Um, you might like it, you might not, but you never know until you actually get the chance to shape it down and see what actually works for you. There are thousands and thousands of different saw shapes and handles. Um, a lot of them are far more common than the other. They're a little more pleasing to the average person. But I'm not an average person, so I want to try something that's a little bit different to me. So we're just kind of experimenting, going around with it, playing with it, going at it with a rasp, and then going at it with a file, smoothing it down a little more detail. Now that I have the shape close to what I want, and I've got the look that I'm looking for, now we're going to start doing a lot of the details. And for this, I have a series of very fine files that I want to come in here. And these are going to get rid of most all of the scratches left from the rasps and the other files. This is the, the final step, and so I'm going to be constantly feeling it and cleaning up little spots here and there, taking down a little more, and just doing all the little detail work that makes it really nice. A card file makes it very easy to clean out the file. They tend to clog up, especially with these fine ones. Uh, they, they tend to fill up and then they stop cutting as easily. So you can empty them out with a card file and uh, those will allow them to keep on going. It, it is not uncommon for this step to actually take longer than the rest. Uh, do your time on this. Do some detail work and don't expect it to just come together instantly. Uh, this is the, the step that really makes a big difference in how everything feels and the function. And the smoother you can get it, generally the, the nicer it's going to feel in your hand. Uh, especially with a, with a file, you can get a lot more of that, that hand feel in there. Then the last thing I usually have is a bow sander. Um, this is great for getting into the organic shapes. You can rotate it around and then sand in different directions. This will allow you to wrap around surfaces and it does a very, very clean detail. It's basically, in this case, a very fine file. Um, I have a 400 grit sandpaper in there. And I've got a couple of videos on making these. I'm probably going to do another one, um, not too distant. But uh, yeah, here's the pile of rasps and files and other tools in order to make that. So now it's time for the finish and you can really start to feel things on this and see how it comes out. Now a lot of times when you put on the boiled linseed oil you're going to see, ooh, I missed a spot here and there were a few file marks on this after this that pop out. And this is a chance you can go back and clean them up. And that's the nice thing about the boiled linseed oil is it's very repairable. You can go back and detail it and fix it afterwards. You can put on multiple coats and not have a problem on there. It doesn't change the, the color on it. And before I do the final little details on it, it's time to actually put it back together. I want to get it back together and see how it looks before I do the, the final carving into it. And you just fit it down in place until the nuts pop in, and then you can start and get the, uh, the, the split nuts on the back. Um, I actually split the split, I put the split nuts then on the face side. Um, you know, historically they're on the back, uh, but I actually like showing them off. So I put it on the side with the etch as well. There's no right or wrong to that as long as they can flip around. Some handles have different sizes for one or the other. And sometimes they can be a bit of a pain to balance out and screw on. But uh, eventually they go on down in. Now I like to clock my nuts so that all the lines are running in the same direction. So you have to be careful with how much force you put into it because it's a good chance to, to pop them out. I want them all running down. So let's actually take it for a test drive and make sure that it still cuts. I didn't do anything to the blade so it should cut just as much as it did before. Um, but we want to actually then finish it up with a little bit more detail. And a lot of saws have this leaf pattern on them. And I thought, eh, let's give it a chance. I, I've never actually done this before, but it's incredibly simple. Just grabbing a V-tool and you do dive cuts and then pop them out. It's a really, really simple little carving design. And you'll see hundreds of different designs for this. Uh, they're all over the place. And I have a couple saws sitting out of the bench that I'm just trying to emulate. But since we had the BLO on there earlier, we need to go back and reapply it. And this is a, it's a good thing. With, with boiled linseed oil, it's not a done once and done finish. It's something you have to reapply regularly. I try and do it on an average basis. In this case, just adding a little bit more there. Might as well just coat the whole thing. 
and then add a little more paste wax and we're good to go. And I'm really, really happy with how this came out. It came from a saw that was uncomfortable to one that is perfectly fit for my hand and one I'm looking forward to using for a long time to come. So there you have it. We have the back that has been completely shaped and now is very comfortable. I am I am in love with this. It's one I'm probably going to use a bit more. I would like it to be a little bit longer. That's one of my things that I don't quite like about pack saws. They tend to be a bit stumpy. Uh, but for the money, this is phenomenal. If you want a good brass back saw, the pack saws are, are really the ticket. Shape the handle to fit your hand and you will have a saw that will last you a lifetime. Very, very good saw. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. If you want to uh, to do that, I have a link to the pack saws down below, and I'll try and leave a link to the Vertus saw that I also use. Uh, it is a, a great way to do it. Plus, something just looks really good about split nuts. So, yeah. You'll probably see this coming out a good bit more in the shop, uh, as I like to use these for different purposes. This one is a little bit faster, a little bit thinner plate, but this one's got a little bit more weight, so I don't want to, when I want to be a little more lazy and don't put as much force into it, the weight of this saw will do all the cutting for me. So I hope you liked it. If you do have any questions, ideas, thoughts, comments below, let me know those down below. I do read through all the comments and try to answer as many as I possibly can. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon, members here on the channel, people who are making this channel happen. Thank you. I say it every week, but honestly, without you guys, this channel would not exist. So if you ever do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, tell them thank you. They're the ones, quite literally, keeping the lights on. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. There you go. And that is exactly how you get a handle on the situation. <laughs> I bet you didn't saw that coming.